So the Sidemen recently released their very own food business, Sides, and I wanted to try some, but they only launched it in Dubai and London. The issue of this is, Uber Eats and Deliveroo only deliver in a five mile radius of where the restaurant is. This is Sides. And this is me. I'm a hundred miles away. So I did what any sensible person would do. I walked 100 miles to try the Sidemen's meat. Your ex is a bitch. I give you good deck. Ride me away, away. You're my holiday. All right, it's the morning of. Oh, why did I choose to do this? The first day was bound to be the easiest. I was fresh, uninjured, and had a clear path from Birmingham to Coventry, just over 20 miles. What could possibly go wrong? The Met Office has issued a rare red weather warning, and winds are forecast to potentially gust to up to 90 miles an hour. It kind of reminds you a bit of those photos you see of a battlefield. I've never seen a battlefield. So I'm in Birmingham, and I'm starting mile one. And I've already realised how stupid this is. This bike is too heavy and I'm tired. It's 99 to go. I hadn't even broken five miles yet, but stuff was already getting crazy. I went to the shop to get myself some lunch and... Cherry Fanta? What the fuck? What is this shit? Am I the only one that didn't know this was a thing? What the fuck? Tall people problems. Fucking lawnmower in a tree. Power Ranger. As you can tell though, at this point I was still full of energy and naivety. So enjoy it while it lasts. It's prime. It's going. Prime. 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 Just not going the right way. After following the canal for almost three hours, I had to traverse off road into a very muddy field. There was a family there with an unleashed dog and the mother of the family warned me saying that the dog bites. So I stepped to the side to avoid spooking the doggo and I may have a little bit of a, of a tumble. Whoa! I genuinely made that noise and felt as if I was in a Scooby-Doo episode. And you know what the family said to me as my phone, my earphones and my charger all went flying out of my pockets? Do you? Because I didn't hear them say a fucking thing! Oh. Where the fuck am I? I genuinely can't believe- How has Google Maps sent me- I've got to go that way! Look at that! What the fuck? Now this might not look too bad to you, but that stone right there... That's not part of the ground with water surrounding it. It's floating! I stood on it! And it sank! I'm only a few hours in, and I already looked and smelt homeless. So we've just reached the 10 mile mark, but I think we need a change of plan. I need to find a shop so I can bathe myself. I've just had to wash my hands with shampoo. This is where I started to realise how stupid this was. I was now on a five mile stretch of country lanes. No path, no light, sharp turns. Bad drivers, the sun was setting. So I've not recorded anything in about six miles. I am still no closer to civilization. I'm still at least four miles out. I've got another hour and a half down this country lane and it's going dark. Um, if I don't make it out of this, I'll look after my mushrooms. And the scariest bit happened when a pickup truck pulled up next to me, slowed down. Slow down. Slow down. Stopped. There were no exits. No driveways. Just me. Did they want to help? Were they concerned? Were they a fucking serial killer? Did they see my luscious locks in my dump truck ass and think I was a damsel in distress? All I know is that as soon as I turned around and they saw my face, they started driving again. Genuinely terrifying experience. Oh my god, I see... I see streetlights. Pavements. Oh my god. I have made it. Just got to the room. Quick tour. Oh god, I hate that. Where's the light? Roll. Okay, bath. I like baths. Anyone in the cupboard? Roll. About any 
children. So far, so good. Got two birds with me and my bitches. Oh, my God. Things have taken another turn. So I've bought two options for dinner. I bought some burgers and some pasta. Not healthy, but I need to get some stuff in me. The only issue is there's no microwave and there's no kettle, which means I'm probably going to be on the beef jerky tonight. And to make matters worse, I was excited to have a bath. But uh, there's no plug. <laughs> Something else I've just noticed, and I don't like to complain. It's nice, it's cheap, it's, it's, there's space. It's just, um, my door, it doesn't lock. Funny story here, um, turns out my room did lock. I realised this after testing it from outside my room, in my pants, and then I couldn't get back in. I had to use my card 15, maybe 20 times for it to work again. This whole adventure was off to just a, a, ter a terrific start. Why you gonna pull my trousers down like that? Yeah, down like... Always pull my trousers down and do me a beers. Day two started and the first thing I did was buy a lovely breakfast sandwich. You know the kind. Egg, bacon, sausage, some sauce. Apparently, not in Coventry, this breakfast sandwich seemed to consist of egg mayonnaise with some corned beef. 2 99 that cost me. And it wasn't even a triple. Hey. Oh, that's just a log face. So I'm just approaching my fifth mile of the day, which does bring us to 25 miles overall, a quarter of the way there. I've got 32 miles to do today. You won't see much for me. It's going to be loud. I think it's going to rain. I've got to walk for 11 hours. This burger better be good. Now, what happened next was the scariest thing in the entire trip. And some pretty fucked up shit happens later on. This was mental. Oh my god, right, so I'm just walking along the canal and there's this woman with a dog in front of me, maybe a hundred meters away. <laughs> it's not funny. The dog rolls over on the edge there and fucking falls in. Splosh! Right into the water. I couldn't even see the head at first. Terrifying! It's not this bit. It's down there where it's like at least a meter before you hit the water. <laughs> Not funny. And the, the dog fucking falls in, and the lady is like trying to pull the dog up. It's not funny. And then I see everything except for one leg hanging over. I thought she was gonna fall in too. And then she almost falls in, and I'm there, like sprinting with my shattered ankles. So I'd love to say I got there and I heroically pulled the dog up and saved its life. But after running as fast as I could, I lay down next to the lady to help pull the dog up, and then she pulls the dog up on her own. <laughs> and this whole time, it happens in a few seconds, I'm just running on instinct. So I reach up to the dog to make sure it's okay and... That's the thanks I get. I did hang around afterwards to make sure both the dog and the owner were okay, and she was laughing about it too. So I'm not just making fun of someone else's traumatic event, but oh my god. Talk about fight or flight. I'm gonna have to this, but that's definitely piss. My map wants me to go right. It's kind of locked. Which means I've got to take a detour. I've got to walk even more. Now, have you been paying attention to the clouds? See, the day I left for this exhibition, it was snowing where I live. Meaning that the entire time I was being chased by the storm south. And as you can see, it had started to catch up. <laughs> I think the storm has finally caught up with me. This is the hardest hail I've ever felt. It's like glass on my face and the wind is literally moving me. And I must say, this is ridiculous. At least when I get to my hotel, it'll pass. And then it's clear to appear on out. Whose idea was this? We've just hit the 50 mile mark. I don't know if I should feel happy or extremely depressed. I don't know if you can tell what the weather's like, but I can show you this. That's not a river. That's meant to be land. In my final stretch of day two, Google decided to direct me through cycle paths and tunnels when it was pitch black. I was on red alert the entire time. And as I got closer to my destination, I noticed something weird. There was a tree just 
blocking the path, but not a heavy one like we'd seen before, a small one with lots of thin branches. One that one or two people could easily manoeuvre directly across the path. Now I play enough video games to know that this was a trap. I was so confident in fact that I climbed up this bank to the main road just to avoid the opportunity of any potential pirates or highwaymen there to steal the rest of my £2.99 breakfast sandwich. Because that tree, my friends, was sus. Okay, I made it. Ooh. It's definitely a much nicer hotel room than, than last time. Unfortunately, because of the storm, literally all of my clothes are soaking wet. Those are the ones that aren't in the bath. Bath. I've been going towards London, I'm already sounding posher. This was the hardest day. I'm hoping that <laughs> I was so close to quitting today. And at the last three miles, I felt like three hours, it, it was uh, the, the wind, the hail, the dark, the cold. To me, this isn't about a video anymore. It's not about the title. It's not about the burger. This is about proving to me that even if something seems fucking stupid and ridiculous, I'm still going to do it because I'm fucking stupid and ridiculous. 52 miles down, over halfway there. I'll see you in the morning. You got me nerding, thinking the dudes. Squeeze my boss while I'm getting screwed. I Storm Eunice hits the UK on Friday, and a rare red warning has been issued for wind. People are being warned that this may not yet be the worst of it. Walking 100 miles is never going to be easy, but it shouldn't have been this hard either. Although up to this point I had been filming a good bunch, I hadn't been filming any of the ground. You see, throughout the countryside there's these bumpy, slanted, uneven grassy paths. And if your ankles weren't destroyed by those alone, there were brambles. These grew like hurdles, so your foot goes underneath, then your ankle snaps up on them. And this didn't happen to me once or twice. It happened at least 30 times. My ankles are literally still purple from these fucks. I hate nature. Despite the storm having destroyed my motivation and the land around me, I somehow managed to knock off a few things from my bingo list on day three. Can't wait to visit Stacey's bushes. In fact, I even met a well-known YouTuber when down in Milton Keynes. Hey guys. I found cute stuff. Before arriving at my third hotel, I witnessed another horrific catastrophe. I went into Tesco. And I saw them. Cherry Jaffa Cakes! What the fuck, McFitties? First, you say they're biscuits, now you're turning them into fucking cherries! So I know I've not recorded much today. Main reason for that? Been having a breakdown? I realised I was so exhausted last night that I didn't even give a, a room tour, so... Here's today, as I said, you've got a mirror, you've got a chair, you've got a window and a bed and a chair and a bath. The original plan for this week was going to be a five day event. Uh, I've managed to condense it into four. We're on mile 69, we've just hit. Over time, I've been learning a lot about what not to do. So, for example, I'm eating properly now. I had McDonald's for lunch and I've not had tea. But tomorrow I'm having a big... We'll have a smooth breakfast before I leave. Then we've got eight, nine hours of walking. I haven't recorded much in the last two days because it's either not been safe. You can see on the country lanes, so there's just nowhere to walk. So I'd either drop it or get hit by a car. And when I could safely talk, it was windy so you couldn't hear me. Such a hard life, man. But now we're here. It's half past eight. I'm going to sleep. I might see you in the morning for breakfast. Oh. 69 miles. I'm not even laughing. What's happened to me? Yeah, I want that cock now. Anal position. Make me scream out. One more day. You always know a day is gonna be good when it starts with a nice huge breakfast served by a kind, friendly waitress. She tells you to enjoy it and you reply, thanks. 
You too. I've got so many memories of Toys R Us, but um. They all died, bit of shit, innit? Especially on my channel. Okay, okay, I only got a picture of this because I didn't know how much I could show. But who needs the London Eye or Big Ben when you have this beauty? I just left a forest and I came across this huge bush with a piece of newspaper on it. I looked closer and it was a page free, the nude modeling page. I thought, that's funny, until I got a few steps further and saw another page on the bush. And then I realized it was another page free. Who's making a bush full of nude women? And why aren't I involved? Augustus walk. I sure hope he does. My final resting place, Travel Lodge, allowed check-ins from 3 p.m. So I arrived at 3.01, but couldn't get in. The doors wouldn't open. I thought they might just be running late from their lunch break because there wasn't another door you could open with a hotel keycard. So I waited. 10 minutes. Nothing. 20 minutes. I walked around the building to try and find another entrance. 30 minutes. I was back at the front and I was starting to get pissed. 45 minutes. I'm sat by the door and see another customer come up to the door and push a button. The door opens. I guess I have to open doors for myself now? They don't open for me? What the fuck, London? I thought you were advanced even in the Tesco. The fridge doors open for me. This makes no sense. I could have died. We're in the final stretch. Five miles left, just over an hour. Oh, I am fucked. But I'm so glad that I, I saw this through. Ah, <sighs> microwavable Russell burgers. Controversial food at its finest. Quarter pounder, chicken sandwich, breakfast muffin, hot dog, you know them all. So imagine my face when I see a cheese melt. Rustler burger. What does that even mean? Now imagine my face again when I remember that UK budget hotels don't have fucking microwaves. We finally made we've made we've made it. <laughs> oh after 100 miles of painstaking walking after four days we made it. We've still got a couple of things on the bingo list we have to do. So we've just got to, we, we've just, we've just got to. I'd made it. I went to put my order into Uber Eats. I was so excited. I, How could this happen in me? I wanted to cry, but then it weren't fine with Deliveroo. So I've, I've got no idea what that was all about. <sighs> After everything, <laughs> it's all come to this. So we've got a sides box, which is got. I do like the packaging. Nice stickers. Oh, it's like a um, the Happy Meal. <laughs> because I was in a hotel, I couldn't have the food literally dropped off at my door like normal. So I asked the driver to call me when they got outside. And as I saw them approach on the map, I came down to greet them. Obviously, I was wearing a mask. I get a call. And I answer it. It's him. It's a yes sir. I see a guy with a mask on that's just pulled up with his motorcycle, and I see a guy on his phone. So I think, it's the guy on the phone. But then the guy on the phone says something, and I don't hear it come through on my phone. And then he walks off. So I keep telling the driver that I'm outside the travel lodge. The driver keeps telling me that he's outside the travel lodge. But we couldn't see each other. The motorbike guy points at me. I think I'm getting robbed, so I shake my head, and he leaves me alone. Turns out, that was a delivery driver, just with an unmarked motorbike. I didn't even see he had a storage contraption on the bike because again, it was just black, it was unmarked. I don't know how motorbikes work, I thought it was the engine. Turns out, he had a mic built into his helmet and earphones in, so the call was on speakerphone, but it didn't look like he was talking to anyone. We were on the phone with each other for four and a half minutes, standing next to each other. But the silver lining is... I got someone's number. We've got a burger, water, which is posh, and those are the loaded waffle fries. I just got some other bits that are recommended. Oh no. Oh, I ripped the bat. Oh, they got something called secret sauce, and um, obviously I don't know what it is. And I got chunky onion rings, because I heard they were really good. And my personal favorite thing that I always order, 
interesting. Their cheese and jalapeno bites, they are a little different, but we're going to try a, a bit of everything because I walked, I walked a little bit of this. So naturally, we've got to start with the water. Compare it to Volvic, so for the side water's winning, compare it to Brecon Crump. Throughout this journey, I've had lots of water from lots of different places. I've had to boil water in the hotels, get it from shops, get it from takeaways, get it from pubs. It's actually a pretty, for takeaways, it's good, good water. Best water I've had all week is a question I'm interested in. So I got the burger, Louisiana sauce, but I did specify no pickles. Did they get it right? Oh, oh, that looks good. I'm not a fan of tomato either. I didn't see an option to get rid of it, but I am very sleep deprived. The roll does look good. For a takeaway burger, the roll looks good. It's not hot, it's not boiling, but it's not cold either. And I fuck with it. I've had quite a lot of McDonald's this week, and that genuinely beats all of it. So these are the sauces I got. I thought one would be Louisiana, the other was a secret sauce, but I think they all just come with secret sauce, so I've got two secret sauces. Now next up we're gonna try the waffle fries, but we need to wash it down, so I've got some, 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 some prime. Some, some prime. I hope prime tastes better than that. <laughs> I don't think I've had waffle fries before. Is that tuna on top? Not sure what that is. Tastes like real potato, which I guess is good. I'm normally not a fan of like potato or chunky chips, but I do fuck with this. Oh, that's hot. Oh, that's hot. Oh. Is that tuna? I can't tell. But it tastes fucking good. It tastes. That tastes good. I forget who said it, but somebody said that these are the best onion rings they've ever had. They definitely look bigger. Give it a dip. Salty. I don't think I've ever tasted salt in an onion ring before. Again, they're a bit cold, but what the fuck? I'll put the cold down probably just to the delivery, you know. They're good. And they're good. So the final thing we've got to try is these, the cheesy jalapeno what do they call these? Oh. 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 Can you see? Oh, that's so much cheese. Oh. What about with some sauce? Oh. Fuck that. Oh my god. They're so. They're. Like I mentioned, I get these from every takeaway that does them. Are these the best? Like, genuinely? Not even to suck dick? They are. Fuck. So after trying one of everything I've got, this is how I'm gonna rank them. Gatorade, at, at the bottom, it doesn't taste of much. Next, I'm surprised, but I'm gonna put the onion rings. They're good, but I think they were hyped up too much for me. And just the onion seemed a bit too attached. Like normally you bite into an onion ring and it goes straight through the whole ring. And I kind of snapped it and just the batter came off. It could be a bad batch. Maybe I'm just stupid. In the middle, we're gonna put the, the water. <laughs> Next, we're gonna put the waffle fries. Very good, I like them. But like I said, I'm not the biggest fries guy anyway. I don't, I'm not a fan of potato. So they're, they're good. The way they've been put together, they're good. Next, I'm gonna put the cheese and jalapeno bits just because I can eat a box. I probably couldn't eat two, but the burger, I had it with Louisiana sauce. I could probably have two of those before I was like, oh, you know. It was like a really messy, dirty, better McDonald's burger. And in a good way, like it has that bit of McDonald's in it with like the, how the sauces squirt out, but it was, oh, it was good. It was good, very good. Um, was it worth a hundred miles? Uh, 